is it about the Alabama Hills that makes me want to come back year after year to explore its rugged terrain and gain an ever-expanding photographic perspective of the beauty of this area? Is it the combination of rugged rock formations, expansive vistas, the ever-changing play of light? Or is it just the feeling of solitude and wandering through this high desert area in the shadow of the Sierra Nevada mountains? Having had the privilege of exploring this mesmerizing terrain over the years, I've discovered hidden gems and captivating vistas that I would like to share with you. Each photograph tells a unique story, and the Alabama Hills offers the visitor a distinctive perspective on the natural history and photographic artistry of the area. This presentation is not just about showcasing my work. It's about inviting you to join me on a virtual expedition encouraging you to explore these remarkable landscapes yourself and discover the unique perspectives that resonate within your own artistic vision. So as we embark on this visual adventure through the Alabama Hills, whether you're an aspiring photographer, nature lover, or simply someone seeking a moment of tranquility, there's something here for everyone. In this overhead view of the Alabama Hills, I've located four different locations which I feel are photographically majestic in their own qualities of composition, artistic elements, and geologic formation. These areas of the hills are not visited by many, but are certainly worthy of exploration and discovery. Good morning, everybody. I'm out here in the Alabama Hills with Mount Whitney and Lone Pine Peak right behind me here, right at sunrise. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful morning. A little breezy out here. I'm shoot out here shooting the 4x5 large format camera. Um, I was not able to do that six months ago because it was so windy out here. Uh, but uh, today it's not too bad. The wind speed's probably about five to eight miles per hour. But uh, I'm about ready to shoot the 4x5, and I'll show you that setup here in a minute. But uh, the winds uh, are pretty persistent in the early morning here. And when you think of it, that's really what makes up this whole area. It's been going on for millions and millions of years. The wind, uh, the rain, the, uh, the heat, and all of the expansions of the, uh, the temperatures within the rock, the granite, helps to build this area the way it is. Uh, but it's mainly the wind. The wind really has really pretty much shaped this. You, would, you wouldn't really think it that way because of the, the hardness of the granite, but the wind over a long period of time will, uh, will sculpt these and shape these rocks the way they look, the way they are. 
So right now we're going to go over there and take a look at the 4x5 and uh, get going on this particular shot. I'd like to explain why I chose this spot. Uh, it's really pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of artistic expression behind it. Uh, I'll show you what, why I chose this particular area and we'll go over there uh, right now. So I've been coming back to this spot for many years and I'm trying to perfect it every time I come back here. But this is one of my favorite spots right here. Um, it's uh, really rugged, artistic. You can see my camera set up right there. And I'm shooting towards this area right here. So what I like about this area is uh, it really completes the, uh, or includes the uh, elements of art. Uh, which includes, of course, line and shape, space, uh, form, color, but mainly line. Uh, there are a lot of um, directional lines within this area right here. Right now, the sun is just appearing, and I'm going to go shoot the uh, uh, film. And it's really beautiful light right now, but you've got this high horizon line right here. And you have directional lines, diagonals this way, diagonals going this way, and you have more diagonals going down this way. So it's really pretty amazing. This uh, this is a really beautiful spot to uh, to photograph, and it makes a good wall print too. So here we go. Okay, so here's the view from the back of the camera, and we'll come around to the front. Show you what I got here. So this, uh, this is a 4x5 camera, it takes 4x5 sheet film, not a digital camera, it's a total film camera. We've got a yellow filter on there for contrast control. And I've had this camera for, well, since the 1980s. And uh, we're going to take a look at the picture, the scene, the view that I've been taking here. So if we come around here, right next to the camera, you can see what I'm looking at. If you're ever hiking in the Alabama hills, you will undoubtedly come across these strange rock formations which don't resemble the typical granite boulders and outcroppings you see at all. Why are these rocks so blackened and jagged and don't seem to fit in with the lighter colored and rounded granite that's so prevalent in this area? Let's take a closer look at these rock formations and try to capture some interesting photographs. Okay, I'm in an area of the Alabama hills right now where there's a very different kind of a rock um, wedged in between the granite on both sides, uh, but this is volcanic. This is called a volcanic dike, and it's about 150 to 200 million years old, as opposed to the granite, which is only about 50 million years old. But this was at one time volcanic magma magma that was flowing deep down underneath the ground and as this uh, granite was way down about five miles down below the surface this magma flowed in between cracks in the granite and eventually it took millions of years for the granite to lift with along with the Sierra Nevada mountains uh, by way of uh, plate tectonics but once the granite rose to the surface, this, this was already hardened and you can see that it was at one time wedged in between the granite from one side to the other. This granite was all right here too. This was just granite here, granite there. 
But over the process of probably 50, 60 million years, the granite wore away by way of erosion and had left this volcanic dike. That's what they call it. So you can always tell volcanic material because it's super hard. It uh, is not as um, susceptible, susceptible to erosion like the granite is. The granite just wears away by means of wind and rain, freeze and thaw cycles like we talked about earlier. So but it's interesting how it's in a continual erosion process. The granite will, all this granite will wear away at some time in the future. It may take a million years or so. Now I'm not a geologist, I'm a landscape photographer, but I think it's important to know the history or the backstory to some of the places that we photograph. So what I'm going to do today is uh, take the take some pictures of these of this dike here, especially this wall, because it's got some great texture to it. Uh, the way the uh, with the angle of the sun right now, uh, we see some beautiful cross lighting showing the real texture to this rock, and uh, kind of brings out some color too. There's some color but, uh, right down in here. But these dikes are amazing. They'll go for a long ways. Uh, called a swarm, and it's actually a swarm coming down in veins all the way from the Independence area. So I'm going to set up my cannon, my old cannon right now, and uh, take some pictures from this angle going this way because I want to see the texturing uh, that the sun gives here. Okay, let's do it. Okay, the big problem right now is that I'm shooting straight into the sun, so I'm going to have to shade the lens with my with my hand. And I have to do a focus stack too because of the depth of, uh, of the, si the situation here. So I'm going to focus on the foreground here, then just kind of work my way through the focus distance, uh, ending up in infinity, trying to get the, that uh, hill in the background there. So we're going to go right now. Okay. Looks good. Before continuing our photographic journey in the Alabama hills, I'm going to take you on a little detour just nine miles west to the beginning of the Mount Whitney Trail. Here in this rocky terrain, we find the source of Lone Pine Creek, whose waters find its source high in the snow-packed peaks surrounding Mount Whitney, the highest peak in the lower 48 states. Lone Pine Creek gently flows through the canyons and over the granite precipices of Outpost Camp and eventually cascades down Whitney Portal Falls. Here, its streaming waters are a wonder to witness as its pulsating spray and the rocks below add to its majestic beauty, especially in the late summer and early autumn months. So before returning to the Alabama Hills, I took several pictures of this fall, and I encourage the casual traveler and photographer to visit this beautiful and peaceful location.
this canyon that I'm coming into now is kind of interesting. Uh, this wash, this uh, creek, when it's flowing, it flows down into this waterfall area, comes down into here, flows down into the canyon. And this is a pretty interesting area here. Really great rock formations all rounded again by weathering erosion. And I took a panorama of this area too. So you can see my camera here. But uh, this is at the very south end too of the Alabama Hills. Beautiful. Look at this granite here. It's just really so loose. It's eroding so fast. I'm not even going to touch it. I'm not going to break it off, but some more here. Look how loose that is. This stuff is just eroding. So yeah, it's just chipping away, chipping away through time. Okay, right now I'm uh, at the very southern end of the Alabama Hills, way down near this housing area, which is right behind the camera. And um, I'm going to be photographing this big monolithic looking huge boulder here. And uh, I'm going to be shooting 4x5 with some film, sheet film. And I want to shoot sheet film because I like the, of course, the texture, the feeling of actually holding the film. But the resolution in large format 4x5 film is comparable to a really high resolution digital camera. So it's a little slower in taking the picture, but it's, um, it's a lot of fun, basically. So I'm going to be uh, taking a picture of this uh, with a filter to kind of darken the sky. It's going to be black and white, and I'll shoot some color too. So um, I'm going to get set up with the 4x5 camera, and uh, then we'll just take it from there. Here we go. So for this shot, I'm using uh, Delta 100 black and white film. I've got an orange filter in front of the camera to get to gain a lot of contrast, make the sky a little bit darker. And uh, 135 millimeter lens gives me enough coverage to get this whole shot. So I think it'd look pretty good. <laughs> 